All right, so this is King and After Effects. All right, so here's a look at what we're going to be doing today. As you can see, I keyed out all the background behind the main character there, that you can see there. Uh, I also did some minor color correction for him to look like he fits in the scene a little bit more. And um, might not look that great since it is a time lapse and the background is changing. But we'll take a look at that more uh, as we kind of get on into it. So let's jump right on in. All right, so here we are in the After Effects program, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by importing in some clips here. Probably what you're used to seeing, the uh, green screen that we gave you earlier before with uh, Mr. Daniel Duca Green. I'm just going to drag and drop this sucker right on in there. And then as always, I'm just simply going to drag and drop this right onto the Make Composition icon. And now we can see our green screen footage is now in a brand new composition. And if we even want to, we can check out our comp settings that we can see is the same at 1280 which is what our footage is. Same frame rate as our footage, as you can see and same duration as our footage which is perfectly fine with me and I'll leave it labeled as green screen and the duration I'll leave that also. So here we can obviously see we have uh, Mr. Daniel Duca Green here in our footage and we also have uh, a friend of mine here that's holding the boom for our actor here. Now obviously in this key we don't want to have our boom guy in the shot but if we were to scrub through the shot you're going to easily see that you know our main character never crosses in front of him. So I'm going to use what some people might call a garbage mask uh, just simply by going up to here to the rectangular tool and I can either mask him out like this or I can kind of go vice versa and, and go the opposite direction and mask him out. And if you're wondering how to create a mask we can simply do that by just simply clicking and dragging. But if I decide to, uh, to just mask around the boom guy I can just change my mask either by simply uh, as you can see right down here added a new mask to our scene I can either change it to inverted, which will take him away, or I can change it to subtract. Either way is fine, but now my boom guy is gone, and now I no longer have to worry about him uh, being in the scene. Now, some people might even do this if they have light stands or other things in the shot, so you know you can feel free to use garbage masks however you see fit. Now, I just want to point out real fast here uh, that if you don't have your layer selected and you click and drag, you might notice it's actually making a shape layer here, a red shape. It might be another color, it doesn't really matter. But as you can even see down here in the timeline, it has a shape layer right there. Uh, so to make sure we don't do that, we just simply have to select our layer and then make our mask. All right, so like I said, uh, we have our garbage mask over our boom guy there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and key out my character. And like I said before, we're going to do the hard way first and then I'll show you some of the easier ways. Um, so this is usually my formula for keying anything out. Uh, I usually just immediately go right up to the keying, obviously. And the most basic of all keys is pretty much just your regular color key. You're going to see once I select the color key, nothing really has happened to our footage quite yet. But if I simply go over to the um, effect over here and change the dropper to be part of my green screen, you're going to see now it's starting to pixelate my green screen a little bit there. As I increase my color tolerance, you're going to see it's going to start to eat away at my green screen even more. I don't want to go too crazy because it's going to start to eat away my character, as you can see. And I'll even say on, on times, don't be afraid to add more than one regular color key, or sometimes I'll add multiple color keys to something, because I think we can easily see here, in fact, it'll even point it out even more, if I add another color key, you're going to see that these two greens right here are two different greens. One's a lighter green, and that one's a lot darker green. But uh, I can definitely use two in combination with each other to fully take that away. And uh, if you'd like, you can even use the edge thin, which will tighten it up even more. And then we also even have the edge feather, which will feather those edges. I usually leave those alone. Uh, but as soon as I've done the regular color key, I'll then go right back up to my effects. And then I'm going to usually use either a matte choker or a simple choker. In this case, I'll just go ahead and use a simple choker. And you'll see it adds on, and we haven't seen anything yet. Obviously, we have a green outline that we want to take away on my character. So I can just simply increase the choker, and you're going to see it's going to start to eat away a little bit on my edges of my character. Now, it's always better to cut into your character a little bit than obviously see a green outline, which is a telltale sign that you're on a green screen. So uh, don't be afraid to cut into your character on occasion. You know, obviously don't do it too, too much, uh, because then you'll start to uh, cut into their hair and everything like that. So uh, after I use a simple choker, if I have a lot of spill, like sometimes I'll have uh, somebody who is wearing a silver shirt. I even had them one shoot on a green screen. Sometimes I'll even just go up to my effect, again, back down to keying, and I'll go to my spill suppressor. And again, this is just something that I use the dropper over here to select whatever part of the green. Now, he's kind of wearing a darker jacket that kind of meshes in with the green, so he might change a different color entirely, as you just saw happen. Uh, but usually this works a lot better. Now, it doesn't 
really take away the green. All it really does to the green is just changes it to a different color. So I just want to make sure you understand that. But that's usually my formula. You know, you have your regular color key or whatever type of key you decide to choose. Use a simple choker to choke down the mask around him a little bit. And then I use my spill suppressor if I have any spill. Now, like I said, that's the hard way. So I'm going to erase all those and start from scratch here. And I'll show you a little bit easier of a way here. I'm going to again go up to effect and I'll go right back down to key. And here we'll use the color range, which is one that I like on occasion. And um, with the color range, the reason why I like it is you can see that it has a black and white mode over here. That as I use my color dropper, you're going to see that it's going to start to eat away parts of my scene. And over here, you're going to even see it gives me an alpha mat of what is black we don't see and what is white we do see. And as you can see, I even have an additive dropper there that I can just hit, click on other parts of the green and just add more and more to it. And just keep doing it until all my green is fully gone. And the reason why I really like it is because it's really easy to see right on over here in my little alpha mat area. So as you can see again here, I still have a little bit of a green outline around him. So I'm simply just going to go right back up to my uh, mat choker. And I'll even show you what the mat choker is. The mat choker has a little more effective. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to adjust it. And that one just chops right on into it and again just takes away that outline a little bit more. Uh, again, I can choose to use the spill suppressor on this one more time if I so desire. But I want to show you the last and probably the best that everybody seems to like. Alright, so the last keying method we're going to use, which is probably the more popular, is if I simply go right back down to keying and I'm going to go to key light 1.2. Um, now, there might be newer keys depending on what program you're using, whether it be CS5 or 5.5, but all of them pretty much do the same thing, if not have better attributes or key out things better. So it really doesn't matter which program you are using. Now in this case, I'm going to again go to the, go to the eyedropper, and I'm going to select it, and I'm just going to pick any sort of green, and you're going to see it eats it away pretty well, but again, I still got a little bit of spilling down there that is not fully keyed out. Now, usually what I do when I'm in this key light is I like to go to a screen matte mode, which shows me, just like we saw before, a black and white mode. Now in this case, I want to make sure that I have the areas that I want out to be completely black, and the areas that I want in to be completely white. So you can see, for instance, his hands here are a little bit, you know, grayish. And I want these over here to be completely black. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over to my, uh, there's actually a few things we can do. Um, you can actually start to play with your screen gain a little bit and screen balance. Sometimes I might lower this, um, sometimes I might increase this, the screen gain just a little bit. Uh, in this case, I might go to 110 if I so desire. And then sometimes people increase the screen balance also. And that just kind of, as you can see, kind of defines our colors a little bit more. I might increase that to about 70. Uh, after that, if it still hasn't done it, I'll usually increase my clip black a little bit here. And as you can see, now I'm really starting to get my pure blacks all over the place. As well as you can see, I can roll down my clip white a little bit, and we're going to see that my character is now going to be a solid white. So, you know, it, when it comes to keying, there is no exact values that you can do for every single key. But just know that... that these are the things that you can play with, the screen gain, the screen balance, as well as the clip black and the clip white in order for us to get that pure, uh, very good key of what we want. Now if I go back to my final result here, we can get to take a better look at what's happening here. I, it looks like it's pretty good there. And if you want to, you can see I have a clip rollback there or a screen shrink. Sometimes I'll use a screen shrink a little bit there to uh, increase my, you know, as you can see, my radius on my character. So now I'm, I can increase that, or I'm sorry, decrease that into a negative value, and you're going to see it's going to eat away on the edges of my character. And as you can see, this one's probably given us the best key thus far. Now one last little thing you might want to do here in the screen mat area, sometimes I've noticed that I get a little bit of a grain, and sometimes I'll even toggle off my, my little uh, checkerboard here to make sure my character isn't transparent, which sometimes can be hard to see when you're dealing with a black background. Now also know, whenever you're dealing with a black background, background. This is probably the most unforgiving background that you will ever have. Black. I can guarantee that. So uh, this will be very unforgiving. Whereas I had like a nice sunny bright day out behind him, that would be a lot more forgiving than this black would be. Uh, sometimes I'll play with this color right here, the replace method. I'll change it to a hard color. And again, this is in case if my character is a little grainy, I might have to change this to hard color or source if he's looking that way. But in my case, I saw that soft color was fine, so I'm going to leave it that way. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, we do have a little bit of spill on our character, and uh, if we wanted to, we could fix that. They do have an inside mask and an outside mask. If you wanted to add some masks to this uh, key, you know, if you had a 
bat area that maybe had a little trouble, you might have to play with those a little bit. But the main one I want to take a look at was the foreground color correction and the edge color correction. These are really good because these are other things that can help you out in making my character seem like he fits in the scene even more. Uh, you can, as you can see, we can simply just check the little box that it says enable color correction. And now I can start to color correct my character. Now I'm going to do this in extreme value so I can make sure you can see it. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll go with like a blue as you can clearly see that's color correcting this whole thing. So if I wanted to minus my green, I might maybe go towards more of a reddish, uh, reddish bluish area to, to subtract the green out of it. Okay, but in this case I didn't think it was too too bad. I'll just drag it over there just a little bit. And maybe even uh, desaturate it a little bit. Usually when things are in a night scene, they're a little more desaturated. Okay. And if you want to, you see that I can even go down to my edge color correction. Then I control that down, check that, enable checkbox. And what I really like about this one is I'll uh, make him look like he's uh, standing outside by a neon sign. Maybe I'll make, make it all the way over to the red. And you can see I can actually start to increase my uh, edge grow right there. And there you can see now we're starting to see that he's got a lot of spill coming on his shoulders of red like he's maybe standing under a red neon sign or a red light that's right above his head which is good because that'll help him match into the scene whatever scene you have even that much better uh, but in this case I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck those because I don't really want those but I do want to show you that those are possibilities that you can use if you so desire check that now let's actually go ahead and put a background in here done all this fun stuff of keying them out now we want to put in our background so I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna pick this random cityscape and I'm just gonna throw that in right on underneath him and that's how we can simply put him in the backgrounds and I'll increase this so it's a little bit bigger uh, it doesn't really fit that well but it's kind of like you know he's a newscaster or something like that just keyed out from the background and he's looking pretty good now in the scene now one thing I do want to point out this is a cool little kind of uh, color correction technique I just learned not too long ago and uh, I'll go ahead and pass it on to you. If you really want to make him look like he's in the scene, like maybe he's a giant in the scene, in this case, uh, if I was to maybe shrink him down, and uh, I don't know, maybe try to make him look like he's behind the bridge or something like that. Uh, you might just have to imagine here with me, there he is with all the buildings. This is a kind of a cool color correction technique that I just learned, uh, that if I select the layer, and if I actually just toggle between my different modes of my red, green, and blue, You'll see if I go to my red channel here, it shows me the red channel. Now, it shows me it in a black and white mode, which really helps out people like me who are colorblind, so I can make sure my character meshes in with the background, if I wanted to fit in there, that is. So in order to do this, I can now see my red channel here, which shows in black and white. So I gotta make sure I compensate for, for that by going up to Effect, Color Correction, and you can either use Curves, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use Levels. And you're gonna see that I wanna make my character match the black and white of this. As you can see, he looks a lot brighter than the rest of the scene. So I'm going to go over here to my red channel on this also, and I'm going to decrease my red. Oh, no, that's not the right way. So I'm going to de um, change my black value over here so it looks like he might mesh in there a little bit better. Okay? And again, you know, this is just an eyeball thing. You got to see it by eye and kind of guess. Okay. Not looking too too bad I might have to come back to that channel then I'm gonna go to the green and then I'll change this to the green and so now I can see okay now I'll just go ahead and increase this so we got our little bit darker blacks there and it's looking a little bit better and I have a feeling the main one's gonna be our blue so let's take a look at our blue yeah that's what I thought and I'm gonna change this to blue over here also and now I want to make sure I lighten that up to make sure he matches that blue a little bit better Okay, not the best, but not the worst. So let's take a look at what our final product looks like. Go to my RGB channel. And so now he looks like he has a little bit more of the blue tones and such of the scene and uh, could possibly fit in there a little bit better. I know this isn't perfect, but you know, obviously, like I said before, you're gonna have to tweak this accordingly for each different shot, depending what you have. But in this case, I didn't even wanna have him that small in this scene. So that's pretty much what you can do with all your different keying. I uh, showed you three different types of keys that you can use there some simple uh, color correction to make them match the scene and like I said you know every single situation is going to be different so you're gonna have to try some things out see what works see what doesn't work 
and uh, wish you the best of luck. Just make sure your character is nice and far from that green screen, that we don't have a lot of bleeding on your character from the green screen, and you should have a really great key to pull out a really great effect. So, good luck.